Okay, on the never-ending quest of uh, repairs to be made, this is our oil furnace, oil-fired furnace down here. Works wonderful. Had it clean not too long ago. Haven't used it much. I've been uh, relying on the pellets. Come home again. I've been putting this off. This red button is popped. This is the safety for the oil burner. Oh, by the way, this is the Beckett oil burner. Uh, it's been cleaned. It's been in great shape, but with the price of oil, we decided to start firing it up again. My oil line is new, my tank is new, the oil is new, the screen is replaced, uh, it doesn't smell like diesel. The button is popping for another reason. And uh, I'm suspecting a bad solder connection. Cold solder joint in the Honeywell intermittent primary box. I'm going to show you what I mean. The reason I say this is just from experience. Uh, the, the, uh, the burner is lighting and firing and and uh, fuel is uh, present, everything is good. I bought a detector CAD cell uh, just for just for fun. It's not dirty, the one in there has been cleaned and I have uh, I have a television that uses, uh, here's another CDS cell, similar similar thing and uh, I'm going to experiment with this. I'm going to take some ohm readings of the one that's in there and this one. I'm going to replace this anyway. I don't think this is bad. I don't think this is what's wrong with it. I think there's a cold solder joint in that button. This is the reason why we can never get to some of these beautiful record players and televisions because we have to work on this sort of thing. Anyway, I'm just taking a note of where the thermostat wires are and that's the CDS cell right there. It doesn't matter. Okay, I'm reading across the CDS cell and I'm not even getting a reading. That's strange. I'm going to read the, uh, what the new one is. And again, this is just a light sensor that senses the presence of flame. And uh, if 45 seconds, if it doesn't uh, hold flame, it will kick that button. Okay, before I open the new one as a test here, this one reads infinity also. But as, I, but as I hold it to the light up here, it starts to conduct. Okay, as I was saying, I ran out of memory, so we got another memory card in. As I was saying, this one also reads zero. And when I hold it towards the light, it starts at about 300 ohms and the brighter the closer I go to the light it goes down to maybe that's right on the light a hundred ohms I get about a 200 ohm swing there um, before I open this up I do have another Beckett hold on I have another Beckett here but it's got the old transformer the old motor, but it was out of a working unit. This is an RWB. We'll see what ours is. But it does have the CDS cell. It doesn't have a, a box because it was a little different. It's a hot air furnace. But, uh, okay. Ours is also an RWB, but it's an AFG. In any event, we're taking that off and inspect it before I go inside the uh, to change the CDS cell. Okay, we lift this off, and what do you know? New 602. My experience with these Honeywell products, this is $80. I just checked it. You probably get it online. Maybe $60. It's your wiring there. It basically interrupts the burner, and you got your hot neutral and the motor. Um, we're going to take this into off to, uh, bring it into the bench. Okay, I may clean this up a bit, but uh, I'm going to go in. I'm going inside this, and yes, it says new 602, so that's no lie because the date code is 44th week of 01. Okay, very simple. Again, I use my spudgers, non marring tool to open up the cover. And let's have a look inside. Again, it's just been my experience with these Honeywell products that they have poor solder connections. Um, I'm going to mark where these wires go through here just so I don't lose them. And we'll take a closer look. That's where the wires went through. And the yellow went through the other one, the CDS cell. Okay. Pull these out. And let's see, under our inspection. I need to look through here, but I'm going to inspect this and uh, take a closer look. Okay, here we are on the inside. Yeah, this is a little nasty. I'm going to clean that area up. 
and there's a MT1, MT2, and a gate. And our carver lesson we just had, that is a uh, triac with the gate, and it switches. And it says D1. I don't know what component. No, it just has two legs. So and another thing I don't understand. Some of these have an LED, and there's, there's the call out for it right there. But I'm missing that. It looks like an LED, a resistor, and a diode. It's like, why can't I have an LED? I almost feel like putting one in there if I had had the gumption, but uh, I think it just lights when the button is popped. Now, back to this button that's been popping. Here's your transformer that supplies the 24 or whatever it is, 24 volts to the uh, to the thermostat over here. Where are we here? Yes, and this is the now this is the uh, sensor. Here's your transformer secondary. And I found so they switch the they switch the 24 volts. 24 has to be live all the time though for the thermostat. Yeah, so okay. So more on that later. Uh, what I do want to do is on this here, is it the button? Two suspect connections. You'll have to take my word for it. But it's uh, that one right there. That one's not so bad. This one right here, which goes over to what appears to be the primary of the transformer. I don't know which is the primary or the secondary. Could be the secondary. Whenever there's AC involved, I see the poor solder connection. That one right there, it's cracked two thirds around. It's probably cracked all the way around. Like I say, this works, but it's real. Yeah, get that in there. I don't know if you can see that. That thing is not good at all. It's cracked. So, I'm going to go around and touch this up. I'm not changing the CDS cell, and I will report back. Let's clean this up. I have a good mind to add an LED to it, but not, not this time. 1001, there's a date code on the board here. The rest of it looks fine. We're going to touch up the solder. Okay, man, it's cold. Everything's going crazy. The camera's going crazy. Everything's going crazy with the cold. It's just that kind of cold. Okay, I've reflowed with new solder, of course. Every connection, just about every connection in here. We'll hit it with some board cleaner. Clean those connections there. And uh, I'm not dealing with the CDS cell tonight. I'll know in a few days how this holds, but uh, this will fire up immediately now that the button's been pressed down. We'll button it back up. Okay, again, I can't say with any certainty that that was the culprit, although that was very, wasn't good looking. So, clean the flux off our solder connections there. We'll put this back in and attach the covers. We should write renewed. 1215. We'll roll those wires and we'll go back downstairs. Okay, here we are reinstalling. I cleaned up some of the connections here. It was messy and too long. I trimmed and put some new wire nuts on there. I've routed my my eye. I'll flip it over. Tuck all that back in there. Fasten it and I'll check it out. Okay, in closing, again, this is a peerless boiler. It's probably from the 70s. It's in good shape, uh, except the previous owners, they never cleaned it. And I guess uh, they were so so backed up and filthy that flame would be coming out the front of it, as you could see. And I called a burner, a serviceman, and I said, I want this furnace back online. And they were like, for $5,000, we could put a new one in for you. It's like, I don't want a new one. It's like, man. So anyway... I've attached the CDS cell and the thermostat wires. Uh, power's off, safety. Well, uh, the only other things I've done to this is uh, change the nozzle. That's the filter for the uh, the pump that's in there, the screen filter, and the oil tank and line and filter and whatnot there. So. Um, we're ready to go. I know this will fire. It's will it stay on? We'll monitor the button. And uh, these wires over here are for the tankless, or in tankless water, which I've eliminated, or it's 
it's not attached over there any longer. I have a separate electric hot water heater. So on this boiler I've changed, let's just recap, we're not using this, the cut off of the hot water. I've changed the sight glass. I've changed the float in the uh, safety here, the steam safety water, low water cut off. I've uh, changed the screen in the pump, the pump's original. The transformer is, uh, is new, which requires an intermittent firing uh, apparatus here because the old transformers would stay on all the time where these do not. I, I have told you'll ruin them. You saw the big transformer on the other Beckett. So anyway, I think that'll about do it. Oh, and I put the uh, pressure gauge, a new pressure gauge in there. And uh, yeah, some other things amongst the cleaning and whatnot. So uh, we've been using this pretty much for about a dozen years here. Well, not quite that, maybe 10. Approaching eight. Okay. Okay, we've thrown the emergency switch. I know the thermostat is calling for heat. Uh, I'll remove my flashlight here. And make sure it's off. We'll flip the switch. I know it will fire, it's just, will this stay? So if there is no part two, you know that the solder connections did it. And uh, I'm gonna show you the CDS cell one more time, but here we go. Never had a problem with fuel delivery or whatnot. For 45 seconds, you'll hear a click in there. Hot stuff. Uh, so we'll just let this run a minute. Oh, and this motor was replaced. The turbo. Oh, it popped. Now see, it popped, and we have flame. It's got to be the CDS cell. Okay, here we are right here. I still have my reservations about this being the problem, but uh, it is angled down slightly, but uh, okay. We'll meter that. We'll replace it. Okay, this one's right up against the, br the bracket. I'm going to note where that was. Pull this out of here. Pull it out of here. And pull this. Here. I really have my reservations about this being bad. We'll meter it. Okay, this has a date of, uh, well, it says 1687, but uh, also says 9134 here. So, let's say 91, we'll say. Anyway, it looks okay. It's not dirty. People say it's dirty. Oh, Okay, right off the bat, I'll cover it up. I've got a reading on this one, which is strange. Get this junk out of here. Okay, let's put you in the dark. In the dark, it has a reading. It's got a reading. It's not like the other one. We hold it up to the light. This one goes really, eighteen ohms up at the light. The other went down to about a hundred. We started at infinity. This one doesn't quite go there. And as I bring the light. This one goes right down, see? This one goes way down. Okay, well, we'll put in our, our Beckett and see how this reads. Alright, okay, here's our replacement here. Installation, install, she trained, experienced service technician. Okay. Reference of one, flip the igniter, move CAD cell, yeah, okay. I've heard of the manual supply with the burner to check the CAD cell resistance. Yeah. 
I didn't get a manual with my burner. Okay. Well, this is too just some. Does this one just unplug? I'm not even gonna go. It looks like this one just unplugs from here. Not messing with it. Well, let's install and see what happens. Well, let's read it first. Oh, this is short. Of course, the other CDS cell we were reading was one from. Well, it wasn't even from an oil burner, so. Who knows? That was a. Uh, I don't think that this is the problem. Something stupid. I think it's that box. We'll see. Same thing. Okay. Let me put it in the dark. Yeah, it reads about the same. I put it up to the light. But a boom, but a bing. Yeah, very low ohms again. It's not the CDS cell. But we'll put it in. I'll have to go back and look at the video, but in doing all this, the way I pulled that out, there's a button here that that hole, that's what retains that. And uh, neither, ne that one was not in. All the way, I'm going to have to do this off camera. There, that's properly installed. It's over the retainer. I don't believe the old one was like that. So, okay, that's all back. We'll flip him. Now make sure the wires are in it outside of the burn section there. Let me put this back down. Check that and we'll fire it up. Okay, test take two. We'll uh, apply power. I'm going to hit the button here. Okay, it's been about 30 seconds. I'm going to let this go a little bit. Almost out of time here. This may run, may not. That's a pretty good sign though. Okay, I keep doing short cuts here. I think we passed the uh, cutoff, or the lockout portion, so we're going to let this run and come back in a few minutes. Still going. This is the Magnavox with the CDS cell here. The tube is weak, and that auto brightness only works during the day. I cannot watch this TV at night, it's, unless I aim a light at it. Okay, I've come back in the house. I notice the uh, burner is not running, and it's gurgling, and it's very warm in the house, so I think we've And hear the steam boiling in there. So I think we're good. Time will tell. But again, I don't. In closing, what did we learn? A little bit about the CDS cell. I don't think it was bad. Uh, I knew it was something stupid because we don't have a fuel delivery problem or a lighting problem or ignition or anything. It was simply just cutting out. CDS cell was clean, although it was not. It was backed. It was not. Uh, it's not correctly uh, mounted in the housing there. So we've corrected that with a new one. We spent money we didn't need to. But all in all, we'll keep this one. I wanted this one anyway for an experiment on the Magnavox. I know the CRT is weak, uh, but I'll explain again upstairs. Okay, I just have it set about 55 uh, during the day. So it's uh, not calling for heat. So that's good. Okay, again on the Magnavox here, basically the CDS cell is in the corner. It regulates the brightness, the room brightness, kind of gimmicky. The CRT is a little weak, a little down on this set, but it plays a nice picture during the day. It's completely watchable. But at night, the auto brightness goes so low that I have to actually aim a light source at that CDS cell there for me to be able to watch TV and sometimes I'd like to watch it in the dark but I can't because this this keeps lowering the brightness so if I put a light to it a source to it 
the picture brightens. Let's think about that in the daytime. If it's real bright in the room, it wouldn't lower the brightness. It would boost the brightness. So I don't know what's going on with this thing. It's it's No, at night, if it's not receiving much light, it probably would uh, lower the brightness, which I don't think this tube can handle. It needs to be on. I'd like to eliminate that or experiment with other CDS cells. Uh, I was going to try the one we used for tonight's test, and uh, I had this in the back of my mind anyway to use a uh, oil burner CDS cell in place of the Magnavox one there and see how it behaves. But uh, more on that later. Again, thanks for watching.